Hello and welcome. Uh, we are back with our Pencast series. Our next topic uh, was originally scheduled to be the four concurrency theorems, uh, which are theorems 4.1 through 4.4. But after uh, sort of sketching out what was going to go on here, I realized we're not going to talk about four of them. Uh, and even so... The, the four theorems that we were going to talk were not the only concurrency theorems. So we're just going to talk about three concurrency theorems. And concurrency uh, is, a, is just a way of saying these are three lines that intersect in a single point. Uh, and I think I, I think I touched on this in, an earlier, um, in one of the earlier discussions. If you have three lines... Um, just any three randomly selected lines, um, probabilistically speaking, what's most likely to happen is that those three lines are going to intersect pairwise, and there are going to be three different points of intersection, one for each pair of lines. Uh, so <clears throat> the only ways that that wouldn't happen would be if... Um, hmm if two of the lines happen to be parallel, which if you're going to be choosing three li three lines at random, it's extremely unlikely that those two end up that two of those lines end up being parallel. And the other possible outcome is that all three of them meet at a single point. And that's what concurrency is. These three lines, uh, which in principle should probably just intersect at three different points. And, and the three different pairs happen to also all pass through the same point. It's a really special thing, and so uh, we kind of make a big deal out of it when it happens. So we're going to talk about theorems 4.1 through 4.3. And uh, <clears throat> these are concurrency theorems for triangles. And our first one talks about the concurrency of perpendicular bisectors. <clears throat> now, one thing I want to remind you of is this fact about um, points that are equidistant to two given points. If P, right here, if this point P has the same distance from P to point A as the distance from P to point B, which is to say PA is equal to PB, then that means that P is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment AB. Okay? And we can sort of get a sense for why this might be true. Um, if you look at point P here, um, it, it is sort of centrally located between A and B. Uh, and certainly, if you picked the midpoint itself, uh, that should also be um, equidistant from point A to point B. And we can sort of see how all of these lines in between, all of these points in between, would have a similar property. So the set of all points... Uh, for which this expression is true, this expression right here, form exactly the perpendicular bisector of this segment. Um, it's, it's, we, can, we know that it passes through the midpoint because, of course, the midpoint is one such point. And uh, if you were to actually break out the distance formula and find the set of all points, you know, here's a, a sketch, you say P is equal to the point x comma y and if you say that a is the point x a y a and b is the point x b comma y b if you actually just applied the distance formula to p and a and to p and b and and simplified those expressions you would end up with the equation of a line and you could given that you have the equation of, of that line you can figure out what its slope is and you can compare it to the slope of this segment a b and you'll notice that it's perpendicular and since it's perpendicular and passes through the midpoint of that segment it must be the perpendicular bisector 
Okay, so <clears throat> keep this in mind. If you draw the perpendicular bisector of two point of two points, or the perpendicular bisector of that segment, then you are identifying all the points that are the same distance from point A to point B. So if I do that on this triangle here, I have the triangle ABC, A, B, C. And if I draw the perpendicular bisector of the side AB, I have found all the points P for which PA is equal to PB. Okay? And now if I also draw the perpendicular bisector of AC, okay, so we have a right angle here, we have a right angle here, we are finding all of the points that have the same distance from point A as to point C. Okay, so let's look at this point of intersection. These, these lines are not parallel, so they must intersect at some point. And so, what is special about this point here? Well, this point P has the property that PA equals PC because it lies, it's on this perpendicular bisector. But, because it's on this perpendicular bisector here, we also know that PA equals PB. Well, since PA is equal to PC and PA is equal to PB, uh, um, things that are equal to one another are equal. Things that are equal to the same thing are equal. This means that PA or PB equals PC. Okay. Well, if PB equals PC, uh, that is the condition that one must satisfy to be on the perpendicular bisector of BC. So if I were to draw the bisector of the segment BC, it must contain point P, because point P has the same distance to point B as it does to point C. Okay? And so um, these three perpendicular bisectors, in fact, have exactly one point in common. And that point is called the circumcenter. And the reason for that is that this is actually the center of a circle because we've established that the point P is the same distance from A as to B as to C. That means that if we drew a circle with, with center P and point A or B or C, that circle must go through all three of these points because all three of these points are exactly the same distance away from P. Okay, and I'm going to draw a circle here. It is probably going to be uh, atrocious, but you get the idea. This point P is a the center of this circle. Okay, so what Theorem 4.1 says is that these three perpendicular bisectors, no matter what triangle we start with, uh, must be concurrent. And we furthermore have named that point of concurrency, and we call it the circumcenter. And uh, this, of course, is not a proof of this theorem. This is merely an explanation as to why it would be true. If you were to write out a very careful proof, you would uh, establish all of these things that we said. You would say, well, okay, take two perpendicular bisectors. The first perpendicular bisector says that these two distances are the same. The second says that these two are the same. Therefore, these two are the same. Okay. Now let's move on. I'm actually going to skip to, the, to theorem 4.3 because... The explanation as to why Theorem 4.3 is true is uh, almost identical in flavor to the argument that we just went through. So, <clears throat> let's talk about angle bisectors. Uh, angle bisectors have the property that they consist of all the points. So this angle is the same as this one. They consist of all the points that have the same distance 
to the given lines. Okay. Now remember the the distance from a po of a from a point to a line is really just the distance the di the length of the line segment uh, that you know if you you draw a perpendicular a line perpendicular to uh, in this case line A that passes through the point P um, then this distance here is the distance from P to A. Okay, and this is the distance from P to B. Okay, so the angle bisectors consist of all the points for which these two distances are equal. Okay, so you pick any point on an, on an angle bisector and you draw those perpendicular lines to each of the line segments, you are going to get exactly the same distance. As long as as long as you are on the angle bisector, okay. So, let's talk about the angle bisectors of a triangle. Uh, we can draw an angle bisector right here on on this triangle, and our triangles have sides uh, A, B, and C. Now, um, on this angle bisector, these are all the points that have the same distance from from that point to A as that point to B. Okay, and if we do the angle bisector on this corner, we're going to look at all the points that are the same distance to, to the line A as to the line C. So if we have a point here, let's call it P again, then the distance from P to A is equal to the distance from P to B. And that's because the point P is on this angle bisector here. It's on the bisector uh, of the angle between sides A and B. Uh, but since it is also on the angle bisector between sides A and C, then that means that the distance from point A, or from point P to line A, is equal to the distance from point P to the line B, or C, rather. Okay? So this distance right here is equal to this distance right here, which is equal to this distance right here. Okay? Now that means that point P has the same distance from line B as it does to line C. Okay, well if it's the same distance from B, if it's the same distance to B as it is to C, then that means it's on the angle bisector between the sides A and B. Okay, so uh, same sort of argument. Um, we've established that the internal bisectors of the angles of a triangle are concurrent. Now we go on and further give a name to this point, we call it the end center. Uh, and since uh, it has the name center in it, that suggests that it's the center of some sort of circle. And uh, the circle is actually this one right here with these three distances as radii. And now notice that since these angles are right angles, here, 
that means that this circle is actually tangent to the sides at this point. So this is actually the center of the inscribed circle. center of the inscribed circle. Okay, now uh, I, I, I mentioned earlier that I skipped ahead. Uh, I skipped over theorem 4.2, um, so let's get back to that. 4.2 is all about the altitudes of a triangle. Now the altitudes are just the, the line segments that are uh, perpendicular or orthogonal to a side that pass through the opposite vertex. So this line here is an altitude because it is perpendicular to the side BC and passes through the vertex A, which is opposite BC. Okay, so theorem 4.2 uh, makes the claim that these three lines are concurrent. And uh, unfortunately, the, the argument is not quite as nice uh, as these last two arguments, uh, but, it is, but what, it, what it lacks in niceness, it makes up for in cleverness. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually form a larger triangle around this one uh, that has a, a very special property that will allow us to apply theorem 4.1. So let's see, let's let's do our construction. So we have our, our, our triangle ABC, okay? And what we're going to do is we are going to construct a line that is parallel to AB that passes through point C. Okay? And now we're also going to construct a line that is parallel to BC that passes through point A. Okay, now what we've constructed is a parallelogram. So this side here has exactly the same length as this side, and this side here has exactly the same length as this side. Okay, uh, and now we're going to do the same thing but in the other direction. So we're going to draw a line that's parallel to AC that passes through point B. And we're going to extend this line that is parallel to BC that passes through point A. Okay? Now let's just name these, these three points that we just uh, conjured up. Let's name this one A prime, and this one B prime, and this one over here C prime. Uh, we know that um, if we look at the tr the parallelogram A, C prime, B, C, uh, this is going to tell us that A, C prime, this segment right here, has exactly the same length as B, C. Uh, but we just uh, established that that segment, uh, that that um, this length B, C is actually also the same length as A, B prime. So we know that C prime A equals B, C, which is also equal to A, B prime. Now notice that C prime A and A, B prime, those are just the, the two parts of the line segment C prime, B prime, which means that A is the midpoint of B prime C prime. Now a similar argument is going to show that AB is equal to the length of B prime or C B prime but it's also equal to the length of A prime C. So B is the midpoint of A prime B 
prime. Wait a minute. C is the midpoint of A prime, B prime. And the same sort of argument uh, will establish that B is the midpoint of A prime, C prime. Namely, um, AC is equal to A prime B and B C prime. Okay, so we have A prime is the midpoint of B C prime, um, C is the midpoint of A prime B prime, and B is the midpoint of C prime A prime. Now let's go back to these um, let's go back to these altitudes that we got from the uh, triangle ABC. Well these altitudes they are um, orthogonal to the outsides of these triangles and they pass through the midpoints of those segments. So that means that the altitudes of the inner triangle ABC are the perpendicular bisectors of a prime, B prime, C prime. But we just established in theorem 4.1 that the perpendicular bisectors are always concurrent. So these altitudes must always be concurrent since they're exactly the same lines. So that establishes theorem 4.2. It says the altitudes of a triangle are concurrent. And, of course, we name the point because concurrency is a big deal. And uh, this point is named the ortho center. Okay. Uh, ortho because of the, the orthogonality of the al uh, altitudes. All right. That concludes our, our uh, the pencast for now. Uh, we're going to come back later. We're going to talk about theorem 4.4. That talks about the medians of a triangle. Um, you are actually going to prove theorem 4.4 uh, in a manner that is different from what the book describes. You're going to use it. Uh, you're going to use a, a very powerful theorem from the next section to uh, simply smash that theorem and uh, prove it very easily. All right. Tune in next time.